Welcome to all our viewers to this coverage of uh, the significant developments in the region in light of al Aqsa storm. The Iranian historic accurate response to the Israeli aggression on the Haras consulate in Damascus changed equations which many believe to be firmly entrenched in the region. This marginalized Israel's awe as a result of or after a Aqsa storm and also got from it or led to it losing more of what was left of its deterrence. Also the countering the Iranian drones and missiles and the stances from Washington, the G7 and the European Union expressing solidarity with Israel, however, without escalating the rhetoric, but rather calling for calm and rationality, which proves that the Iranian retaliation did achieve its results or goal of deterrence and imposing new regional sanctions. So in this coverage we have with us from the Iranian capital of Tehran, the Professor of Middle East Studies from the University of Tehran, Dr. Hassan Ahmadian, from the Syrian capital of Damascus, writer and political analyst, Mr. Ibrahim al -Rush. and from London we're joined by expert on international affairs, Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos. Welcome to all of our guests. Before I begin with the discussion, let's take a look at the following report, whereby the decisive Iranian response to Israel's attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus put the leadership in America and the US in front of retaliation and not taking Iran lightly, which has proven that it has significant military capabilities in its possession. So the report says the following, the Israelis holding their breath following or waiting for the Iranian retaliation ended in how Israel or what Israel feared. Hundreds of drones and missiles made their way to strategic targets within occupied Palestine and opened the Israeli concerns in confronting the Iranian challenge and it posed difficult questions once again about Israel's ability to confront without the full-fledged comprehensive American support the Israeli allegations of limiting the achievements by shooting down drones and missiles as a result of the American intervention did not prevent former Israeli generals from saying that the strategic situation is more complicated and that Israel and the US failed in deterring Iran from launching an attack and Iran succeeded in inflicting harm on Israel whereby Israeli media outlets stated that Israel was subject to an unprecedented humiliation. Commentators say we have to take seriously the Iranian threats and I think what it discussed here is a change in the equation. Now, every time Israel wants to strike at an Iranian target anywhere in the world, it must think if this would, indeed, would be a wise step. Up until now, we thought it could do this and that Iran would not respond. The Iranian response established a deterrence vis-à-vis -vis Israel because Israel will think twice regarding what it would do and if it should do or take certain steps. Now, as experts warned of taking the Iranians lightly and considered them an, a smart, advanced enemy, some also focused on the dilemma facing the Israeli decision makers between deterring Iran after destroying the airbase and inflicting great unprecedented damage on Israel and the choice of containment, even in a price which could be explained as Israeli weakness. According to the experts themselves, these options could further increase the damage ties between the US and Israel and might establish or help establish ties with Arab countries, especially Saudi Arabia, and allow Israel to avoid an open war with Iran, which nobody knows how it will end. I'll begin from Tehran, with Dr. Hassan Ahmadian. Doctor, welcome. Now, if we want to talk, let's say, about the strategic importance of the Iranian retaliation, there are various points. But uh, let's start with the most important. How can we understand the strategic significance 
of this Iranian retaliation which took place early this morning? The answer is good evening. Of course, the deterrent significance, as you said, is maybe the first point. Israel has been deterred. Everything it tried to build, the options extending beyond its borders against Iran and its allies, today these calculations have become something of the past and Israel must reconsider in this regard. So there is a new equation which it must think about and must operate according to. And this is the most important, maybe, which we can focus on. But there are, of course, Mr. If you allow me, if you allow me, uh, Doctor, before we go to other topics, this particular topic, which we heard in the statements of Iranian officials after this Iranian retaliation to the Israeli occupation entity, be it what was stated by the head of the Revolutionary Guards. Uh, Brigadier General Salami and political and military officials in the Islamic Republic of Iran. The when it is said that the equation has changed, does this mean that the previous phase, when Israel used to strike and then run away, or like in Syria, in specifically, but it targeted Iranian officials or advisors in Syria? or targeted members of the axis of resistance in Syria. Has this now changed? Meaning, are we now in a new phase? When Israel strikes, there will be a direct retaliation from Iran? The answer is, uh, of course. This is what the Higher National Security Council, Supreme National Security Council said about an hour ago, when it said that any Israeli attack will be met with a retaliation from Iran ten times stronger than the strike which took place last night, meaning that uh, the prevailing atmosphere before the attack or the aggression on the Iranian consulate, this prevailing atmosphere will no longer exist after that strike and Iran has changed its strategy and its perception and has reconsidered based upon the developments in the occupied territories and also towards what Israel is doing. Israel has gotten used to attacking without receiving the retaliation. Maybe there were different calculations. The pressure on Israel has increased. Israel reconsidered and then it gradually escalated against Iran and its allies specifically in Syria, and uh, everything pointed to a gradual Israel escalation and attempts to change the balance of power between it and Iran after <coughs> October 7, as uh, this balance of power was uh, structurally destabilized, but this Iranian retaliation has forced Israel, in my view, it will force Israel in the future to reconsider this strategy. Focusing on restoring balance of power with Iran in a way which serves its interest today, there is a new equation. Israel will think more than once before it attacks any base or any Iranian assets. Uh, maybe later we'll touch upon the fronts, the other fronts, the, the strategic importance. And this is something which we have to discuss in detail. We'll try as much as we can to go into these details. But uh, I'll now ask a question to Mr. Brahim Alush in Damascus. Mr. Alush, is it as John Bolton said yesterday? that the American deterrence and the Israeli deterrence has become, has been marginalized as a result of this step taken by Iran. The answer is uh, good evening to you and to uh, the well viewers. There is uh, a 
turning point which we have to focus on there has been an infiltration of the skies over occupied Palestine this is qualitative and it was intense with hundreds of drones and missiles and this struck military and security targets from the extreme south in the Negev desert to the Haramon mountain. So we're talking about a strategic infiltration. This infiltration marginalizes deterrence, traditionally speaking, meaning the Zionist entity faces a dilemma. If it is silent, this means it's fragile. If it doesn't, if it's not silent, this will lead to regional escalation, significant escalation, and Iran made it clear that the retaliation will be ten times any Zionist response. Do you, Mr. Alush, sorry to interrupt you, but uh, do you expect, given the American statements, and specifically American President Joe Biden, when he said that the United States of America won't participate in any response, maybe, mm -hmm. to Iran after this attack by drones and missiles, and he called on Israel not to retaliate, considering that what took place was a victory. Uh, some of the drones or missiles were shot down. Do you think that in light of what took place and what we heard, do you think Israel will absorb this attack? and will resort to, or maybe not resort, or might resort to indirect responses? The answer is, I think that this is being discussed right now in the Zionist entity, and that there is a real dilemma for the Zionist entity. For decades, this entity continue to exist based upon this act of deception that it is uh, fortified and can't be touched. I'd like to draw your attention that this Iranian attack after Al-Aqsa storm has once again revealed the strategic fragility of the Zionist entity. So, on the one hand, they have to respond, but maybe the discussions taking place in the Zionist entity are about the way of retaliation. Will they try to export the crisis via Gaza, meaning via invading Rafah, for example? Will Netanyahu make a deal with Biden whereby he says that if I'm silent towards Iran, you give me a green light to invade Rafah and you support me in Rafah? Will the Americans attack other sites in the region in favor of the Zionist entity. I think that the questions are up in the air now, and there is a general atmosphere whereby we can't say exactly what will happen. But we can say definitely that the Zionist entity is in a crisis. I don't think we can say with certainty Okay, uh, Dr. Papadopoulos, do you, or can Israel maybe make a bargain with the United States of America? Can it say to Israel, if you, or can Israelis say, if you don't want us to respond to Iran, you can give us a green light, as we heard Dr. Brahim al say, for example, a green light to, to invade Rafah. Does Israel have the ability to do this? Can it, to begin with, can it retaliate against Iran without an American green light? Well, let me answer that question by posing a question. Why did Israel bomb the Iranian consulate in Damascus in the first place? I am of the firm opinion that the Israelis committed that uh, illegal, murderous strike against the consulate in Damascus in order to incite a war between America and Iran. 
I do not believe that Israel has become suicidal, but I am of the opinion that Israel has become desperate. And desperate people or desperate governments are prone to making irrational decisions. And the Israeli military is bogged down in Gaza. And the whole of the world, in terms of ordinary people in all four corners of the world, on, have now seen the true face of Israel. And they do not wish their government to have anything to do with the Israeli government. So clearly, the Israelis are hoping to get out of this very dangerous situation they're in by instigating a war between America and Iran. And of course, whilst the Americans did not condemn the Israeli strike on the Iranian consulate in Damascus, nonetheless, in private, the Americans would have been livid with the Israelis. They would have told the Israelis that this is very dangerous, that this risks America being compelled to take action against Iran. And if America has to take action against Iran, then American interests will be devastated in the Middle East, as would Iranian interests. So the Americans are not looking for a, a uh, political agreement with the Israelis. I believe in private, the Americans will be telling the Israelis that they have brought this horrific situation on themselves. So how do the Israelis get out of it now? Well, that is very difficult to see, but I do believe that Iran has set a precedent, and that precedent is as follows. In future, each and every act of Israeli aggression against Iran will be met with force. And we should also bear in mind that the attack by the Iranians on Israel was quite a light attack because if the Iranians wanted to inflict heavy damage and heavy losses on the Israelis, then they could have done. The, Isra the Iranians have taken steps, very measured, wise and sensible steps. And for the Iranians, the matter is now over. The ball is now in Israel's court. But all is not well in the relationship between Israel and America. Forget what the Americans are saying in public. What is important is what they are saying to the Israelis in private. It is not in the interests for there to be a war between America and Iran. And America will not let itself become involved in a war with Iran. But it is in the interests of Israel for there to be a war between America and Iran. And this is just another demonstration of how Israel is a tremendous, enormous force for instability in the Middle East. And the reason why Israel is such a force for instability in the Middle East is because this country, Israel, is never punished. It is never punished for its horrendous violations of international law. And the day will come when maybe, just maybe, Israel does ignite a very serious war in the Middle East. But for now, the Americans will not fall into the trap of the Israelis and neither will the Iranians fall into the trap of the Israelis. America and Iran are united by one thing and one thing only. They do not want to fight each other. It is not in the interest of the Iranian revolution and it is not in the interests of America, of American interests in the Middle East, for the Middle East to go up in a ball of fire because Israel wants that. Uh, Papadopoulos, uh, the Israeli Broadcasting Association said that Israel was in the process of launching an attack against Iran, but it was cancelled after a phone call between Biden and Netanyahu. This proves what you just uh, uh, said about maybe the United States of America, uh, maybe it had 
convey messages to Israel to uh, prevent them from taking such a step. This seems to be likely even in the public statements. There appears to be a clear American approach in de-escalation in the region and the attempt maybe via the statements to portray what happened as a victory by shooting down some of these missiles. Dr. Ahmadian, there was communication between the Iranian Foreign Minister Hossein Amir Abdullahian and also a number of foreign ministers and the EU foreign policy chief, Joseph Borrell. There was clear American or Iranian, sorry, criticism and Iranians blaming the European officials, specifically Britain, France and Germany given their condemnation of the missile and drone attack by Iran against the Israeli entity. The double, these double standards which we hear from the West when they don't condemn the attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus and their condemnation of the American or the Iranian retaliation, how can we read this? The answer is, of course, for Iran to show what happened is important and these messages are looking for these goalposts because Iran is telling the world that it retaliated which is guaranteed in international law and it has the right to do this. The Western countries which did not condemn except for Norway in the EU nations for example they did not condemn Israel or its attack on the Iranian consulate. As soon as the Iranian attack began, they began to react uh, and there was criticism and denunciation, etc. For Iran, this was clear since the beginning and the remarks of Mr. Abdullah Yan were not in order to change this behavior. Iran knows that these countries are not neutral, they have double standards, but they want to show the world that Iran is not the one which violated international law, but rather Israel, the EU, the Western countries, those that support this violation. Given their support for Israel, they are supporting the violations of international law. This is what, this is what Mr. Abdullah Yan referred to the Iranian foreign minister when he said that the Security Council not issuing a statement regarding the aggression on the Iranian consulate encouraged Netanyahu to violate laws. Mr. Ibrahim al in Damascus, to what extent can we hold the Security Council responsible because it didn't condemn this Israeli aggression against the Iranian consulate in Damascus? holding responsible for the recent escalation of the Iranian retaliation and maybe if a condemnation would have come from the Security Council the end might have been different or things would have gone differently. The answer is I thank God that there was no condemnation so that Iran can retaliate in the way that it did. After all of these decades before the 20th century, we know what the so-called international decision, what so-called international legitimacy means, and how it always stands on the side of the Western nations against the oppressed peoples. I'm not one of those people who pins their hopes on the international law and international legitimacy. Yes, Iran managed the conflict in a way which doesn't hold it legally responsible, according to the so-called international law, but this is not our ceiling, my dear friend. Let me remind you of a very important point. How did the Palestinian people and how did the Arab masses, how did they view the Iranian response to the Zionist entity? They looked at it from the angle of a Luxor storm, the Iranian drones and missiles which came hammering down on the Zionist entity they mean organically supporting Gaza and supporting the resistance in Gaza. Hence, there was an additional message sent in addition to defending Iran's sovereignty.
and the main issue, legally speaking, is defending Iran's sovereignty after the Zionist aggression against the Iranian consulate in Damascus. The main focus was the Damascus aggression, but uh, when it comes to what has been taking place ever since October 7, 2023, the fact of the matter is that Iran sent a message via its missiles and drones, a message of support for the armed resistance in Gaza, and uh, the main issue is Gaza, the excuse of the Zionist entity to launch the aggression against Iran is supporting the resistance in the region in general. First and foremost now, at this current time, the resistance in Gaza, the Iranians now are very good in conflict management. They know and they say that in the end, the fight is with the Americans. This is not poetry. In the end, the United States of America and its agents in the region tried to, to intercept the Iranian drones and missiles, and they know that the confrontation with the United States is going to happen at some time. But they were very careful in not being dragged into Netanyahu's game. Yes, and Netanyahu did want to change the equation from Israel launch an aggression on Gaza to Israel defending itself against Iran so that the West, all of the West, and especially the US, would stand behind the Zionist entity against Iran. So Iran was very careful not to be dragged into this and had sent a message to the Americans saying that our fight is with the Zionists, so don't stand in our way. Mm. And hence, there were many reports in Western and American media outlets uh, great concerns that Iran would retaliate against the uh, American bases and assets in the region, but Iran took care not to do this. Up until this moment, all of the arrows, if you were like, were directed at the Zionist enemy, and there were exchanges of messages between Iran and the US, Dr. Mr. Brahim al -Lush. this is what the Iranians and the Americans announced, be it by or via Switzerland or some Arab countries. Turkey also said that it uh, relayed messages between both sides. Iran requested from Washington not to intervene in any retaliation from Israel and warned that, that all of these bases will be under Iranian fire. For this reason, it seems that the American tone differed, actually, after this response from Iran. Mr. Papadopoulos, or Dr. Papadopoulos, we spoke before about the double standards after the Western nation statements, specifically the European statements about condemning the Iranian retaliation and not condemning the Israeli attack or the Israeli aggression against the Iranian consulate in Damascus. The Western countries, despite everything that has taken place in Gaza, all of these crimes which were committed by the Israeli occupation over a period of around seven months and which continue to be committed daily in the Strip, we find that they haven't taken any steps, but at least in statements, in verbally, they did, we did hear things, and also when the members of the World Central Kitchen, we also heard the Europeans raise their voices, because they have Western or European citizenships. How does this impact the ethics, or the ethics in which the Europeans and the Westerns always brag about? Well, let's be clear about something. The hypocrisy, the double standards of America, Britain and the European Union vis-a-vis -vis Israel is breathtaking. It is astonishing. The Americans, the British and the Europeans know very well that the Israeli attack on the Iranian consulate in Damascus not only violated international law and the United Nations Charter, but it also violated an internationally adhered to norm. Specifically, embassies and consulates are never ever to be attacked with military force. The West knows that 
And yet, the Americans, the British and the Europeans refuse to condemn the Israeli attack and also refuse to say that the attack was a violation of international law and the United Nations Charter and the rule that embassies and consulates are never to be attacked with military force. But then there is a simple reason as to why the West will never condemn Israel in public, in public. And that is because Israel is the main conduit for Western influence and power in the Middle East. If, if, if Israel did not exist, then where would America's supremacy of the Middle East be? It's very simple to say, no Israel, no America, no America, no Israel. But what are the Western powers saying to Israel yeah, that's, in private? That's sorry, uh, Dr. Papadopoulos, uh, is that that's a situation remains as such when you say that the Israel allows for American supremacy in the region, now Israel needs American support, even against the Palestinian resistance factions. After October 7, we saw the American fleets coming to the region, the Western fleets, the French, the British, etc. Now, after the Iranian retaliation, America came in, it used, it operated all of the air defenses in the region to shoot down some of these missiles and drones. And so hence, does the situation remain as such, Israel representing force for the US in the region, or has it maybe become an indicator of American weakness? It is evidently clear that long gone are the days when the Israeli military was supreme in the Middle East. Israel cannot afford an all-out war with Hezbollah. And Israel can also not afford an all-out war with Iran. It is clear that the Israeli military campaign in Gaza has become bogged down. The Israelis have not achieved their military objectives so far. And I cannot see how they will, how they will succeed. The, um, the argument can be made that the Americans came to the aid of Israel uh, last night by shooting down some of, the, some of the Iranian missiles and drones as a way of saying to the Israelis that you were not harmed by the Iranian attack and therefore you have no justification to respond to the Iranian attack. Again, I believe that is what the Americans are saying to the Israelis in private. Again, the Americans do not want an escalation because if Israel does attack Iran, then it is possible that the Iranians on this occasion could respond with a military onslaught in which many Israelis will be killed. And I'm talking about Israeli uh, military personnel. Then and only then would America feel compelled to take retaliatory military measures against Iran. But I believe that the Americans will be doing everything in private to tell the Israelis, to warn the Israelis not to take any further, ma any further actions against Iran. The Iranians have said the matter is closed and I believe in private the Americans are also saying to the Israelis that the matter is closed. But I believe the, um, the Israelis have become desperate and I do not believe that the Americans have, have the kind of control or the kind of leverage over the Israelis that they once had. So again, therein lies the danger. If the Israelis are going to ignore the Americans, then the Americans have one, one option left to tell the Israelis that the unconditional support that they receive from America is now in jeopardy. Let's see how the Israelis would respond to that, because if there is no American unconditional support to Israel, then the Israelis would behave very, very differently 
recently, they would not violate Lebanese sovereignty. They would not violate Syrian sovereignty. And they would certainly not attack um, Iranian interests anywhere in the Middle East. Again, no America, no Israel. Ahrenot actually uh, published something today saying that the cost of the interceptions in Israeli skies last night exceeded one billion dollars. We're talking about a very huge cost, economically speaking. One billion dollars, according to Yadirot Ahrenot, merely the cost of the air interceptions in Israeli skies last night. This doesn't include the costs which the United States also paid and other Western countries that contributed in intercepting these American missiles. Iranian TV published some images from the operation center of Operation Honest Promise, the presence of military leaders and images of the launching of missiles. The commander of the Revolutionary Guards, Brigadier General Hussein Salami, issued the order via the phones to the head of the airspace command to Mr. Amir Ali Haji Zana. So these are the orders given by the phone. I'll try and give you a summary of translation. For the sake of the martyrs, he's saying, and for the sake of our leaders who were martyred, including Marty Qasim Soleimani, and the Marty Muhammad Riza Zahidi and the Marty Muhammad Hadi Haj Rahimi and all of the comrades we are launching the Operation Honest Promise against the basis of the Zionist regime then the religious chants of Ya Rasulullah meaning the Prophet or the messenger of God. And there is no victory except from God.
So these were the images of the launching of Operation Honest Promise in retaliation for the attack on the Iranian coast of Damascus. The West Bank, which is witnessing difficult days as a result of the settler violence, there was a state of joy when the missiles were observed in the occupied, or in the skies in the occupied West Bank. Let's look at this moment when they noticed them. chants from the Palestinians saying with the blood of Qasem Soleimani and the people of Gaza. These are uh, expressions of joy, of course, from the Palestinians saying that the missiles are going down, Iron Dome is proving useless. It's just average Palestinian citizens. Okay, so Mr. Alush, a clear joy in this video in the West Bank when the people there saw these missiles as they landed on various different Israeli sites, but on the other hand, we find that there are some, be it on social media and also in Arab, various Arab media outlets that adopted the American and Israeli narrative, saying that these missiles were shot down and they did not have any impact, but the videos which we saw in the missiles landing on a number of bases, Ramon, Libertim, and also in other various places in the south of the Negev Desert. The footage is clear, but I'll go back to this joy. Does this also reflect the condemnation of the Arab silence and the Arab conspiracy? especially if we go back to what happened this morning as well, the participation of some Arab countries in shooting down these drones and air missiles using American weapons. The answer is, as I said before, the main angle to read the Iranian retaliation is Gaza, the Aggression on the Iranian concert in Damascus is only an exit, if you want, a legal cover for Iran to intervene, and it has a legal cover. So the joy, uh, allow me to say that joy is not just in Palestine. The state of joy extends throughout all Arab territories. And all those who support the res resistance must know that this battle is, this fight is their fight. And they dealt with the Iranian missiles as if it's their missiles and with the drones as if they're their drones. So there was a great state of joy throughout the Arab world. Every Arab honorable, honorable person supporting the resistance and wanting to stand with Gaza. Of course, it was shameful what happened regarding some Arab countries or allowing the Americans, because my dear colleague, let me remind you that this joint defense system between 
America and the Zionist entity and some Arab countries. This was established after the so-called Abraham Accords. These systems were activated in the western part, meaning that towards Palestine to defend the Zionist entity. It is shameful for missiles targeting the Zionist entity to be intercepted in Arab skies. And allow me to say that the regimes involved in such shameful behavior will be held accountable by their peoples and by history. Allow me to add a point as well on social media outlets very briefly, but I have to respond to those who try to minimize this Iranian step. First of all, Iran did not say that it's in the, it's in the process of liberating Palestine on April 14. This Iranian strike is a response to an aggression on the Iranian sovereignty on the consulate. And there are issues which remain. Haven't, there are schools which haven't been settled. Harsh Qasim Soleimani and even the assassinations that took place in Damascus in consulate, this hasn't been settled. The issue now is about one specific point. Is did Iran respond at a proportional or more than proportional level to the aggression on the Iranian consulate in Damascus? Iran didn't respond to a consulate or to a Zionist embassy, although this was an option that was available. It was safe face, but it responded to military and security sites. It was able to reach these locations despite the American and official Arab interception. This is a big breakthrough for Iran, but it's not just for Iran. This is a achievement for every Arab free person, not only an Iranian achievement, a Palestinian achievement achieved by Iran. Of course, the importance of Iran retaliation is that it came very clear, frank, and Iran announced that it would respond to this Israeli step, and it responded 1,300 kilometers and maybe more from the Iranian territories towards the Israeli occupation entity, and hence it did not take the step which the Israeli occupation did by striking this consulate in an illegal way and in secret or unexpectedly it took this step courageously and said we'll put up with the repercussions and now i'll ask mr ahmadian mr ahmadian if you could briefly what are the other fronts which we can also mention regarding the importance the strategic importance of this retaliation particularly that which relates to the developments in the region the answer is, of course, Israel tried to uh, play in the grey zone between it and Iran. Iran responded by going beyond this zone and striking Israel directly. This is unprecedented. It is a huge development, strategically speaking. The other point is the role of the United States of America. The U.S. is the primary supporter of Israel. The U.S. said to Iran, that we will not participate with Israel in any retaliation against Iran. We will help Israel in defending, but we won't attack any Iranian targets after Iran threatened them when it said that any strike will be met with a strike on American bases and forces. Israel in its foreign policy, one of the main pillars of this policy ever since its founding, it's, it relies on the U.S. today this international force, Israel, cannot enjoy its support. The second is the regional implications. This huge development, Israel presented itself as a player that can protect countries and territories extending beyond its own territories. Today, the Iranian drones and missiles strike in the very heart of Israel, not civilian sites, but military sites, which uh, they want to use to cover other things. Sure, sure, sure. Sure. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mr. Dr. Marcus Papadopoulos, ex 
expert in international affairs. Thank you very much for joining us from London. Thank you to all our guests. I thank you to all our viewers.